This is Aram here. Welcome back to Seven Scarlet. We're here talking to Solsky about what his dad was doing during his night escapades. Kyokuwa, Otoko ga mori no yami ni kieta tokore de togirete ru. Dakara, sono ato no kuwashii koto wa ore ni mo wakaranai. My memory ends with the man disappearing into the darkness of the woods, so I'm not really sure what happened after that. Dakara, oyaji ga sono otoko ni saken de ita koto ba. But I clearly remember. Ha kiri to oboete iru ga. What my father yelled at the man. Omae wo kujo suru. To. Oh, my father said that he was going to exterminate him. Exterminate him? Those heartless words send a shiver down my spine. It's as if he had been talking about a rodent instead of a human being that chills my heart. Sono otoko no dan matsuma no koi wo kiita yona ki mo suru. Aya, hakkiri to wa oboete nai. I feel like I even heard the man's death cry, but I don't quite remember. My father likely killed that man. Based on the circumstances, that's the only conclusion that can be reached. What did you do? How were you and your father after that day? I went home to the house, but I was in trouble. I was in trouble, and I was in trouble with my father. I got lost when I tried to return home, and then my father came looking for me. I was lost when I tried to return home, and then my father my father murdered someone. He was never caught. He just continued to live his life as if nothing happened. That injured my young heart. That event is a large part of why I distanced myself from my father and the rest of my family. I can't believe my father just killed someone for no good reason. That man was... he was a really kind person. I was a person. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I'm the one who distanced myself from him, but I can't help... can't bring myself to think badly of him. That's... Ah... It's weird. It's odd, huh? I guess I'm just weird. I mean, at the end of the day, it's your dad. And I felt like... I feel like Solsky tried to push that part of his dad away. That, yeah, his dad was a murderer. But at the end of the day, it's still your dad. But... I understand something now. I don't want to say that it's thanks to my father, but... This town is... This town is hiding a big secret, something so huge that even the residents don't know about it. Something that's extremely important. Sosuke clenches his fist as if he's urging himself on. I... Oh shit. Choices? Didn't expect that. Alright. <laughs> I suddenly put my hand on his, encourage him to cheer up. Put my hand on his. I'm not sure what to say to him, so I put my hand on his. Fist. Sorry. Oh. He jumps in surprise, but then he unclenches his fist without pushing my hand away. A strong, powerful hand. For a moment, my wildly pounding heart slows down. Is this okay? This is first steps to contact. Sosuke, are you okay now? Oh. Yeah, I wonder why. I mean, you talked it out. Usually talking about your feelings usually help. We both fall silent and sit in the lobby for a while longer. The next day, we call our conversation. I'm not going to reread this. We already know the situation. Oh, this is cute. We've never been out here. 
Sosuke is seeking the truth that's hiding within Okinasado in order to learn more about his father whom he loved as a kid, and to learn why his father became a mountain accident victim. It's for Sosuke's sake as well. Plus, I believe that the truth of this town is also connected to wherever my brother went. But on the other hand, I'm filled with an unexplainable sense of dread. Would it really do me any good to learn this town's secret? Will seeking that answer hurt something or someone? I think it's gonna hurt everybody. Oh, <gasps> oh. Um, English to breakfast is so cute. Absolutely delicious. English breakfast tea is the best kind of black tea. I've never had it before. Uh, I had Earl Grey tea. I'm pretty sure everybody else had that. <laughs> Sosuke sits across from me, sipping his tea, not knowing how anxious I am. Okay, cream cream. Now, a scone, and if I were to get my way, some clotted cream, would make this perfect. What is clotted cream? <laughs> I know what a scone is. A type of baked bread that originated in Scotland and Britain, it's eaten during tea time. It tastes great with jam or honey, but as Solsky said, it's a tradition to eat it with clotted cream. I don't know what the hell clotted cream is, so... It sounds... yucky. <laughs> That's a standard English breakfast, right? I've never had one before, but it sounds really fancy and exciting. Sosuke puts the book he was reading down on the table and smiles at me. We came to Mi Minakami Cafe near Ot Otanashi Pond so that we could talk about talk without having to worry about anyone seeing us. We chose seats out on the deserted terrace, but we haven't talked much at all. You don't go out to eat with your college friends. No, I'm too of an antisocial person to do that. And I never went to college. <laughs> you should be able to find restaurants in Tokyo that serve truly authentic scones. Authentic... Authentic scones, huh? No, I don't go out to eat that often. I don't have any... Ha I don't have many chances to actually. What a waste. I know a great restaurant in Tokyo. Wanna go with me when we get back there? Of course! I'm not gonna reject that. Really? I'd love to. Suddenly all I'm think all I'm talking about is food. We came here today to discuss something much 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 more serious, but the atmosphere isn't heavy at all. The mood is quite carefree. Our conversation is so upbeat and makes makes what we talk about yesterday feel like a dream. I glance at the cover of the book he's reading. It's titled Pastish? Pastish? Where do we come from? Where are we going? This is a powerful work of art that seeks answers to the world's greatest mysteries. It's Fujin Amo's maiden work and was only just released last month. Sosuke is just as much of a bookworm as Yuki. Sosuke tells me that it has some fantasy elements, but overall it's a powerful work about life and death. I wonder if he's so interested in the concept of life because maybe the memories of his past made him that way, I think to myself. After that, we talk about my work at the Furukin Hotel. I tell him about how I discovered that the clock in the hallway of the second floor has stopped. There's an antique clock in the lobby as well. It looks like it would require special tools to repair it. I never thought anything of it when a clock stops until someone told me the time the clock stops is when it died. And that made me so sad. So whenever I see a clock that's no longer working, I'm like, man, that's the time the clock died. I have a clock in front of me too, and it died at 2... almost 2.40. So it died probably like at 2.38. Don't know if AM or PM. Probably AM. Yeah, but you know said he was good he was good with analog clocks so he took it apart and did his best and he managed to get it working again although the bell that used to chime every hour still doesn't work well the clock on the second floor was rather jarring to be honest i'm okay not having it chime every single hour even during the night it's a more relaxing environment when it's silent, which means Kagasuchi did a perfect job. It makes me sad because Big Ben will never ring again and I never got to witness it when it did. I guess it did chime pretty loudly. Speaking of clocks, every calculation of time throughout the world is calibrated to a clock located in a place called Greenwich. Greenwick? 
in England. Is that interesting? Is that true? Ima ya, New York Times Square no toke mo, konna inaka no ike soba no cafe no toke mo, hitotsu no toke o kyoyu shite sono jikan o kizan deiru. Even on the clock in Times Square in New York City, and the clock, clock, clock in this pond side cafe out here in the countryside, tell time based on that one clock. Are you for real? Jikan to wa. Some people say that time is humanity's greatest invention, but I don't think it is. Some people say that time is humanity's greatest invention, but I don't think it is. Humanity put shackles on the realm of possibility. The instant we came up with the concept of time is the instant we denied the existence of eternity. Humanity put shackles on the realm of possibility. Time doesn't flow from the past to the future. This is because the present, past, and future all exist at the same time and all happen at the same time. We'd be here for a week if Soska is trying to explain it, which would make anyone painfully aware of the concept of time. Denied the existence of eternity. What flits through my mind is Soska's father and my brother. No, no, I can't think about that. I, I still don't know what happened. The emerald brilliance, ru brilliance rustles in the wind and scatters the light, quietly moving the shadows on my feet. What? Am I boring you? No, you're not. You're actually pretty wise, and I'm learning a lot. And I don't know if those things are real or not, but I'm gonna pretend they are. <laughs> huh? Oh no, I was just thinking. So. I see. Sosuke is acting the same as always. He's as unsociable as ever, but... His expression never darkened, so he continued talking about trivial things. However, I can't help but wonder about what he said yesterday, about what he saw his father do when he was a kid. And yet, it makes me even more worried that he's acting like nothing's happened. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you out here. Since we came, I've started doubting whether it's something I should even talk about. Huh? Talk about what? <laughs> a lot of things, ever since I told you about all that yesterday. All that must mean the stuff about his father. But I don't want to forget what I said to you. But sitting under the clear blue sky drinking tea with you, part of me wants to just forget all that dreary talk. Sosuke, I'm sure you're exhausted. He just shrugs his shoulders. I don't think I'm exhausted. But I don't think I'm exhausted. Well, that's it. I wonder, I've never thought about something like that. But if this is what it feels like to be fatigued, then I just might be. Gosh, you could just tell me that you're tired. You won't be able to understand your patient's feelings if you act like that, you know? I don't think I'm exhausted. I don't think I'm exhausted. A doctor can suggest possibilities to his patients, but he can't know whether they're 100% correct or not. Human, the end is the decision of the human. More than that, the doctor doesn't think he's going to be able to judge a person or a person or a person or a person. When it comes down to it, a person's own judgment is everything. Although there's no need to patient, there's no end. Sorry, <laughs> there's no end to patients who think doctors are gods or are close to. それに、まあこっちの方が本音なんだが。In addition, well, this is just my opinion, but. うん？疲れたなんてそんな甘えるような言葉、吐けるわけがない。何の解決になるわけでもないからな。There is no point in being self-indulgent, complaining about being tired. Whining won't solve anything, which is true. But you know, everybody still complains that they're tired because we're tired. We just want to know why. Uh, I mean, we just want you to know why we're moving so slow because we're tired. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, this is where I'm going to stop for today's episode. So, see this route. I had a lot of giggles in the very beginning, but now it's more like I'm wanting to know what the fuck's going on. I feel like his dad might be one of those people that needed to kill people and I don't know if he- He just had to kill people, right? To stay younger? Or- I don't remember. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.
touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it.